relative degree is defined so that uh, it tells you in which derivative of the output you get the input okay h is the output function right so you keep taking successive derivatives and these are the terms that appear in the connected to the control in the successive der successive derivatives yeah this is what will happen you will get h the derivative will contain lgh multiplying the control in the second derivative you will have lg lfh multiplying the control and if you keep going on and on the r minus 1th derivative will have lg lf r minus 2 multiplying the control you can see the pattern right it's pretty easy right lg lg lf lg lf square lg lf cubed lg lf r minus 2 right so until r minus 2 this is 0 yeah you take one more derivative the term multiplying the control will be lg lf r minus 1 that's not 0 so, in the rth derivative of y, you see that the control appears, okay. So, this entire business is to codify in what derivative control appears yeah? and that is what I have written here, y is h, y1 is lfh, y r minus 1, because of this property, your dynamics in terms of this new variable, this is the state transformation. The state transformation is coming from your output that you chose, from the y you chose, okay. I choose the y as h, its first derivative is lfh because the control term is 0 by virtue of this assumption, second derivative so on has 0 control, similarly all the way to r minus 1th derivative no control, right, no control because of this assumption. But then when I take the rth derivative, the control appears because this term is now not 0, okay. Now, taking any subsequent derivatives is useless as far as feedback linearization is concerned and he has a very relevant question, is this the order of the system? No, r is not necessarily n, okay, r is not n. So, you can see in this new state transformation, how many variables did I get, new variables? r, right, I just have r, uh, r or r, r plus 1, right, if I take y, y1 y0, y1, yeah, it is r plus 1 variables, right, yeah. So, this is invariably going to be less than n, less than or equal to n and yeah, definitely cannot be more than n, yeah, because in the nth derivative anyway of the control appearing, no, otherwise you have no control, <laughs> the control does not appear in any derivative then does not mean that you have no control, yeah. So, the point is that uh, you have only r minus 1 variables that you could design, alright. Now, what is the whole purpose here? I took this output y, just like in the pendulum case, I took the output as the uh, x1 state or the q1 state, which is the angle, right. I took some output, I got this r plus 1 uh, state equations and in this equation, I have uh, the control, right, and this term is non-zero. So, I can use this guy, okay, I can use this guy to cancel this. You can see that, right, that I can use this control to cancel this guy and introduce a linear term that makes this system linear, okay. But then the question is what happens to the rest of this, are these linear or not, yeah, are these linear or not, that is not yet clear, okay. But what you can, what we can say is this piece becomes linear, okay, at least that much you can say for sure, alright, alright, let us see. Let us see what happens further. Uh, now, in order to sort of assess the properties of lead derivatives, we have to prove a couple of lemmas, yeah, slightly uh, difficult looking. So, please do not get scared. Uh, we will introduce one more new notation, which is the add bracket, that is the add notation, okay, which is basically the notation for successive Lie brackets, yeah. So, add f k g is basically k brackets. So, basically if you think of it simply, add of 0 g is just g itself, add f to the power 1 g is f Lie bracket with g, add f to the power 2 g is f Lie bracket with f g Lie bracket, okay. It is a successive Lie bracket notation, yeah. 
again why are these important from a controllability perspective you can move along successive v brackets also so it's pretty cool actually if you think about the geometric implication of this it's saying that you can move along f and g and you can move along lee bracket of fg you can move along successive lee brackets of fg so these are the directions in which you can move so again um, we will look at that later uh, or we may not look at it so let's not worry about it uh, but we will we'll use this in the uh, proof of when we can do feedback linearization so we need this result which says that if you have these quantities to be zero all these quantities to be zero and notice these quantities are zero for up to k equal to r minus 2 right this first result is equivalent to the second result is what we expect okay the first one we already have by this by the relative degree assumption right so what we are saying is if the first one holds true then so does the second one okay again we'll use this in the proof so bear with me it's a bit technical uh, but look at the expressions here you had lg lg lf1 all the way to lg lfk yeah and this is this being zero is equivalent to we are saying lgh lfgh l add f k g h okay so here if you remember the lee brackets is also giving another vector field so we are saying you, you are taking this lee bracket with respect to g then g and f subsequently and so on is same as saying that these being zero is same as saying that you take lee bracket with respect to g add f g and so on and so forth add f g add f square g add f cubed g and so on yeah so that turns out to be zero how do we prove this uh, we prove one key result and that proves all of this what is that key result the claim is that l f g is equal to actually i have written it here it's nicer the claim is this lee bracket sorry the lee derivative with respect to fg is the same as lf lg minus lg lf times h okay so we are saying that this holds always okay so this is all a play of derivatives yeah we just playing a lot with derivatives it notationally seems very complicated and maybe difficult to follow for the first time but just look at it it's just derivatives reordering derivatives okay so all i'm saying is if i take the lead derivative with respect to this fg bracket is the same as taking lf lg minus lg lf there is always this commutativity type of or you will see in all of lead derivative ideas uh, even the linear system uh, you know uh, context you have this the uh, the matrix ab minus ba has a very a lot of value okay so it's almost like that it's like ab minus ba right lg lf minus lf lg or uh, sorry lf lg minus lg lf how do i prove they are equal i evaluate both of them and show that they are equal all right so so i don't do anything very complicated what is lead derivative with respect to the bracket i expand the bracket yeah we already know this formula all right and now i expand the lead derivative which is what del h del x multiplied by this guy that's it because this thing inside this is actually the lee bracket between f and g i just defined it right yeah okay now i evaluate both pieces here okay lf lgh so this is essentially lf of lgh right what is lgh this guy similarly lg lf is lg of this guy okay after that i am again this is doing successive derivatives like i said yeah what is lf of this notice that this is a scalar valued function right because del h del x is a row vector gx is a column vector product is a scalar same here okay so i am trying to do lead derivative of a scalar ha huh? what do i get take partial with respect to x yeah multiply by fx that's it only thing is how to take partial with respect to x for this i just take product rule take partial of this guy first and then take partial of this guy okay there are just two pieces here yeah you just have to make sure that you are consistent with the dimensions because now there are matrices involved this became a matrix this is a matrix yeah this is a vector 
this is a row vector okay so that's it you just have to be consistent with the dimensions otherwise it is just using the product rule yeah okay so all i did was because because i have to take another derivative right it's like taking second it's like a hessian like you have jacobian hessian right you take first derivative with respect to state then second derivative with respect to state it's almost like that similarly i took two der the second derivative now of this guy that's whole this guy just using the product tool and then i multiply by gx all right now what if you look at these guys this term and this term will cancel just look at this del square h del x square gx times fx del square h del x square fx gx okay this will cancel yeah believe me there is matrices and vectors involved yeah but this guy will cancel with this guy okay once you have that cancellation you can see what is left if i subtract the two only this much and that's this yeah that's it so in order to prove that these two are the same i have done nothing but write the two formula yeah very painful looking bookkeeping but that's all it is it's bookkeeping and i cancel okay so but this is very cool right looks like some uh, new language we are writing yeah it's like i mean if somebody doesn't follow this area he is like what what have you even written it looks like some morse code yeah so it's like you know lfg h is lf lg minus lg lf yeah looks simple right nice okay good but remember we were trying to prove that equality that you know lg lf uh, lg lf square and all these being zero means that lg l add of g l add of square g those are also zero yeah that they are equivalent but what is the nice thing we can using this simple idea we can iteratively prove this okay the first thing that we have is that lgh is zero okay we also have lglfh is zero right by the first two right i know that lg add of l add of gh is what is this guy what i just wrote here and that's what lf lg minus lg lf times h so i expanded lf lg h minus lg lf h what do i know i know that lg h is zero right i also know that lg lf h is zero yeah because that's what i assumed right yeah so i have already proved that lf g h is zero okay done okay so once i have this nice formula this entire proof goes through very smoothly okay now if i want to do the second level i just we are not going to show me too many levels i think until second level what is the add of square g it is l f f g h x okay again just painful looking but math is not complicated yeah this is actually a lie bracket so this is lf lfg minus lfg lfhx again by using the same formula yeah because it, you can take do this with any two vector fields right i have f and i can think of this thing as g now the new vector field right so i can keep doing this with any vector lf lfg minus lfg lf okay i can keep doing this again and again right now what now i can expand this this is l add of g this is basically the same as l add of g right similarly this is l add of g and lfhx now notice that lfh is already zero by the first step itself right we already have lfh is zero we have already assumed lfh is zero yeah now what we are left with is l add of g lfhx this guy no did i get that right no 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 sorry 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 i did not get that right i apologize i apologize we know that l add of g hx is zero we have already proved that yeah i am wondering why do i need the next step because i already have lf h also to be zero right so this term is actually zero i should be done anyway 
yeah i don't think i need this additional step uh, this additional step is not needed see because l add f g h x is already zero by this guy and l f h is already zero from here what did i miss what did i miss ha huh? Oh, thank you. LGH is zero. Thank you, folks. Thank you very much. See, one tends to make mistakes like this. So all I've proved is L add F G H X is zero. So this guy goes away. This doesn't go. Of course, L F H is not zero. L G L F H is zero. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So all I'm left with is this guy. Okay. What do I do with this guy? I expand this again. L add F G I expand again. L add F G is what L F L G minus L G L F, right? By this same formula, yeah. So L F L G minus L G L F multiplied by L F H X. Now I'm back to where where I want things. This is L G L F squared H. This is zero by this whole thing, yeah. So L G L F square H is zero. Similarly, L G L F H is also zero. Again, by this guy. So now it's good now we are good now this is zero okay so i hope you are able to follow this fun math yeah just practice it a little bit what i would recommend is you try to do this write out this proof by hand on your own yeah write out a few more terms yeah go to add f cube g yeah once you do add f cube g i think you will learn because it's painful enough to write this much yeah so but what have we shown essentially now that we have until now we have used that lgh is 0 lglf h is 0 and lglf square h is 0 right we used it here so we have used these three are 0 and what have we obtained we have obtained that l add of 0 gh is 0 because l add of 0 is just l add of g 0 h is just um, i did not say this is actually just lgh huh? because that's what we defined this notation right so that is already zero okay we will also prove that l add of g is zero we also prove that l add of square g is zero so we use three equalities from the first one to prove three equalities in the second one so this should be evident to you that if i go further i will be able to prove that l add of kgh lf lh is zero if and only if lg lf k plus lh is zero okay this is just pattern we are using just the pattern huh? you are just matching the indices yeah until now we used what like i said lgh zero lg lf h zero and lg lf square h zero we used three things so 2 plus 1 3 and we proved what lgh is zero again we proved l add f h is 0 and we proved l add f 2 h is 0 right so that's essentially what i'm generalizing here okay that's what i'm generalizing here we have proved l add f here k is 2 until now until what now what we proved we have shown with k equal to 2 right uh, and l equal to 0 i guess we used k equal to 2 and l equal to 0 and so similar so we use lg lf square h is equal to 0 until this point we used okay does that make sense yeah again what i will strongly recommend is please go back and write out these terms yourself in a notebook you if you write it out it will be clear to you if you just look at it it will not be clear to you yeah but i'm not doing anything complicated i'm this is the only thing that we needed to prove yeah once we prove this we keep using this successively again and again to do all this entire proof go through okay but anyway this is this is enough for the proof for this lemma this is enough so basically we can uh, so basically using this idea we can actually prove that lgh is 0 l add of h l add of gh is 0 And all the way to l add of k g h equal to zero. Okay, we can basically go on like this is what I'm saying. Yeah, you can sub do the same thing again and again. Yeah, you can take another derivative, take add f cube g, add f to the power four g. You can do this all the way. All right, that's essentially what I'm saying. Yeah. All right, all right, fine. Uh, 
then we have another lemma which is sort of based on this lemma uh, which is uh, essentially saying that if I have a relative degree r for the system ok. By the way um, in these notes we have been rather specific it says that relative degree r at some state x0 yeah usually it is better if you have uh, relative degree r in a set yeah because otherwise doing feedback linearization only at one point uh, is not going to help you in terms of control right because you are not going to operate only at one point. So, you typically want to have uh, some at least partial feedback linearization in a set ok some set at least. So, that if you operate in that set you can apply this feedback so that the system looks linear alright. Alright. So, what are we saying? We are saying that if you have a relative degree r system then these row vectors are linearly independent. What are these vectors? dh is simply partial h with respect to x ok this is just the small d notation because this is uh, h is a scalar valued function when I had the matrix G sorry when I vector value vector fields G and F then I use the capital D notation for the Jacobian ok. So, again these vectors should look familiar to you this dh, dlfh and so on and so forth because we have been taking partials of the we have been taking these partials right uh, th this comes up in the first derivative of h right this will come up in the second derivative and so on and so forth yeah you keep going on and on this will show up in all the derivatives that is essentially what these vectors are ok. It will show up in successive derivatives of the output yeah. Uh, what we are seeing is that these successive derivatives until the r minus 1th again r being the relative degree these are linearly independent yeah if you say that your system is relative degree r ok. Uh, how ok how? How do we claim that? We claim that by doing a matrix multiplication ok. I will just go to the sort of the end we use this we want to use this yeah that is rank of product of matrices is equal to the minimum of the two ranks of each of the matrices. So, this is what we want to use to prove that these are linearly independent vectors. So, what we do is we construct a matrix out of this right because these are all row vectors. So, I construct this matrix right out of this right. So, this matrix yeah and I multiply it with another matrix ok and I look at the rank of the product ok. So, let us see uh, what we are seeing is this product is act this inner product is actually equal to this huh? this is not difficult huh? uh, just look at this uh, this d l f i h is basically this guy yeah it is just whatever is this d d is just replaced d by the del del x right. So, I am just doing del del x of this guy and that is sort of multiplied by this inner product in the r case is just vector multiplication or matrix multiplication right. So, if you multiply these two this is just the lead derivative right yeah this is how we have defined lead derivative ok. Uh, why because this is a scalar valued function right any lead derivative lead derivative of a scalar value function gives you a scalar valued function ok. So, this is a scalar valued function I took partial of that function and I multiplied it with a vector field that is the lead derivative right with respect to this vector field. So, that is what it is L add f g multiplied multiplied by L f yeah the only difference is there are some indices here here there is i add f i and here there is j that is all just to account for the fact that you could have lf square or you could have add f3 and things like that that's it yeah but other than that this notation is the equivalent notation of taking the lead derivative with respect to a vector field ok if i put i and j equal to 0 what will i get just to see if you are following if i and j are 0 in this expression what will be the left hand side and right hand side what will this term be for j equal to 0? If j equal to 0 what is this? What is L f 0 h? Is h? L f 0 h is just h ok. When I put the power as 0 it is just h no derivative a 0th derivative yeah. 
So L F zero H is just H and D of H is just del H del X. Okay. Similarly, if I is zero, what happens? What is add F zero G? G. Nothing happens. Yeah. So that will be basically inner product between del H del X and G. What is that giving you? What is the inner product between del H del X and G? Or product of del H del X times G X. What is that? L G H. Okay. That's what this is. Hmm? You can do it for different parts. That's what this expression is. Huh? Nothing too complicated. It's just saying that. Again, unfortunately, notationally so complicated that you have to wrap your mind around it. That's why I'm saying, please go and write it out. Yeah, please make sure you write this one out by hand in a piece of paper. If you do that, you will follow it. All right. All right. So, what do we know now? By relative degree argument, we know that this guy L add F K G L F L H is going to be non-zero for k plus l equal to r minus one, and it is going to be equal to zero for k plus l less than r minus one. Here we have used the previous lemma, the lemma zero point one, yeah, because the lemma zero point one says that if you have this happening, you have this happening, yeah. And what is this? This is what I've written just now. It's just saying that it's using this. Uh, what I wrote here. Yeah, it's just using this. Yeah, basically just by using that successive L G L F L G L F square is zero. I'll be able to prove that as many L add F G H are also zero. Okay, that's essentially what. Therefore, uh, we know that L G L F L G L F square is zero until R minus two. R minus two th power, and so therefore I will get similarly zero here. Yeah, until R minus two, and then for R minus one I will get non-zero. Okay, that's exactly what I have written. Okay, until R minus two it's zero. It's less than R minus one means R minus two because this is integers. Yeah, yeah, and this is non-zero at R minus one. All right. 